Hey guys, it's Miss Leone here, and I'm gonna be doing a demo today about creating value scales using line. This is part two of our creating value scales using line assignment. In part one, we created value scales using hatching and cross hatching techniques. And today we're gonna be using other forms of mark making and line. So for today's activity, we're gonna need a ruler, a marker, a pen, or a pencil. So I'm gonna use a pen. Um, remember, when you use a pen, if you make a mistake, there's no turning back, so choose wisely. All right, so here we go. So I'm gonna take my pen and I'm gonna title the page Value Scales Using Line. And this is part two page two. All right, and then put your name in that corner. All right, so the next step is I'm gonna take my ruler, move my marker there for now, take my ruler, and I'm just gonna underline my title. All right, so now we're ready to begin. So we're gonna start by making six rectangles that are five inches wide, and that is gonna be for each one of our value scales. So we wanna make sure that we fit them all in here. So let's, uh, we'll put them a little closer together than we did in the last demo. So the first one, so I'm starting at five, going down and across. Make sure you hold that ruler strong because if not, it'll move. And if you're using pen, you're gonna mess up. All right, so notice how I left a little space there. That way I can put the number. The next one, I'm gonna start by sliding down and then trace around from five inches down and across. All right, next. So we're doing this six times in total. Across, down, around. Okay, next. Across, down, around, all right, next, across, down, and around, and finally our sixth one, so you just want to leave enough space that way you can actually label them, but you want them all to fit on one page, and if not, you can just use a second page for the last one. All right, so we have our rectangle started now to complete them so I did it that way that way it's easier to complete the edges I can do it in one swoosh here so I'm lining up my ruler with the bottom of the paper if you line it up you'll end up with a straight line and I'm gonna put it to the edge of the boxes the rectangles all right here we go so I'm making a line lifting making a line lifting so you do not want to make one complete line going down the whole paper. We want the line to be only where the rectangles are. All right, so let's continue. So this is gonna be number six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. And the reason we're starting from six is because we already did one through five in the first demo, in the first assignment. Okay, so now let's go ahead and measure each one of our boxes. So one inch mark, so they're gonna be one inches. So we have five all together. One, two, three, four. All right, so all you have to do is mark the top one. And then again, line up the bottom of the page with the bottom of the ruler. And just make those vertical lines. Alrighty, just remember to lift in between so it's not one continuous line. So we're gonna do that for the rest of them, lining the ruler with the bottom of the paper. That will ensure you have a, sh a vertical line. All righty. And the last one. So now that that's done, we're ready to start labeling. So again, one, two, three, four, five, light, medium, 
dark. So we're going to do this for each one. So the reason we're labeling it is because you guys can go back and use this later on in another work of art, in another project. This is being created as a reference. So you can access this later on, maybe next year. You want to use a different shading technique and you forgot what they were, well, you'll have this. And we will be using these shading techniques in upcoming lessons to actually shade objects and make them three-dimensional. All right, last one, one, two, three, four, five, and then light, medium, and dark. All right, so now that we're done with that, we can put our ruler to the side. We're gonna label them. So this first one is pointillism stippling. This is the one we're gonna be using a marker with. You can use a pen, but you will be there forever. Or a pencil, again, smaller marks. The Sharpie makes a bigger mark. Wavy. Zigzag. Bubbles. Scales and squiggly lines. So now we're going to start by adding value to our first value scale here, which is pointillism and stippling. So something that you want to keep in mind when you are doing this, whenever you're using marker to draw, is you want to put a piece of paper underneath it. So the reason that we want to do that is so that way you don't bleed through. If you don't put paper, it will bleed through. You want to make sure that that, that doesn't happen. So the next thing we want to keep in mind when doing this is, and I'm going to show you a few things. So when you're doing pointillism, you don't just want to go and just like slap the marker on there, okay? We want to hold the marker vertically and actually slowly make our dots, make our marks here. And you can do this with a pen, a micron pen, an art pen, but for learning purposes, the bigger marker makes it easier. All right, so another thing you don't want to do is you don't want to put them down in like even rows that look organized. We want it to be random. We want it to be looking like diffuse, like when you spray air freshener, like kind of diffuses into the air, the little molecules. So that's more like it. All right, so let's begin. So if you're doing this in a sketchbook, just put a few pieces of paper behind it because if not, it will be through to the next page. All right, so number one, we're leaving blank. Number two, we're adding just a few of them. Notice how I started on top, I went down there. I'm gonna put another random one. All right, so I have like seven in there. The first one has about seven. The next one, probably going to be double that amount. So let's see how that goes. And again, you're spreading it out. So for that one, I have about 19 or 20 there. All right, so they're progressing from box two to three. There's more. Now box four, maybe be like 50 of them. Sounds like a lot, but once you start doing it, goes by fast. So you want to put enough that they're close together, but they're not quite touching. It needs to look like it's getting full, but not all the way full. So that's maybe 50, 60, depending if you're using a pen or a pencil, you will definitely have more than that. Okay, and now finally for number five, I'm gonna start it a little differently. I'm gonna start by putting, starting at a corner. And as you can see, I'm filling them in. So at this point, that's the idea is we wanna be filling it in. So whether you wanna do it that way, or you wanna start randomly putting dots and then filling in, however you wanna do it. But remember, take your time. If you rush with this, your marks are gonna look sloppy. So again, remember like a sewing machine. So we're just gently adding them little by 
by little and filling it in. This is like a whole bunch. Maybe like 200 dots, 150, a whole bunch. So what I recommend if you have music, you can listen to some music and you can do it to the beat. Tap, 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 right? And you can kind of have a rhythm happening. So that's very helpful too. But definitely um, just stay relaxed, take your time, and before you know it, it'll be nice and full like that. So there you go. Okay, so moving on, we don't need our marker anymore. So that was pointillism and slash stippling. All right, so next, wavy lines. So the thing with wavy lines is that um, they're curving, they're not straight, so they're gonna be like curving. Okay, and we wanna make sure that we even them out. So I'm gonna start with my first one. So I'm not gonna put it really close, I'm gonna leave space, and I'm gonna try to copy the same curve that I made there. So that's all you need to do is do two there. The next box, I'm going to add about four. So since they're curving, it takes up more space of the actual box, too. And try to evenly space them out to the best of your ability. All right, so box three has four. Now box four, maybe I'll have about nine, eight or nine. You just want to try to the best of your ability to keep the pattern of your wave the same as you move through the box. Make sure that they're evenly spaced. Now remember, we're not machines, we're not copy machines, so to the best of your ability, just take your time and it, the effort will show. Okay, so that is box four. That was about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and then box five is a whole bunch. So this is where they can touch each other. So after a while, it's very tempting to kind of change up the pattern, but do it to the best of your ability. It might happen spontaneously, and if that does, it's okay. Just go with it, regroup, refocus. And if you leave spaces, you can always go back in there and add more. So my pattern is changing a little on me, but I'm gonna focus and I'm gonna go with it to the best of my ability. So this starts to have like a ripple effect almost. It looks like moving water. Very flowy. All right. So that is box five of our wavy. I'm going to add one more up here. Fill it in. Okay, so you can see the closer together the lines, the darker the value. The more they spread out, the value gets lighter. All right, so now for zigzag, I'm going to do horizontal. But for these two, if you want to do vertical instead of horizontal, feel free. That's fine with me. So again, I'm spreading them out evenly, and I'm going to try to make them match to the best of my ability. So box three, we'll have like four. Okay, and now box four, we'll maybe have like nine. Almost done. So actually, I did a really good job there, keeping them all pretty much the same. All righty. It's all this practice, because practice makes perfect. And then number five, a whole bunch. At this point, they can start touching. So if you see that you left some space, you can always go back in and add some more lines in there. So the thing with zigzag that separates it from the wavy is that wavy is more curved. Zigzag has more pointed, jagged edge. So it's a different type of line, kind of like a lightning bolt. This reminds me of like crimped hair. That was a hairstyle in the 80s. This kind of has that look to it. 
and it can touch or it can come almost close to touching and we're just doing our best to make it match done here a few more lines so if your hand gets tired please take a break you can pause it and go back to it all right so you can see here I started off really neat and it kind of lost a little focus there but it's okay I try to the best of my ability and that's all that I ask of you guys all right so next bubbles so with bubbles the idea is we're just pretty much drawing circles Whatever circle we start with, that's the circle size we want to have for the whole thing. So don't go too huge. Don't go too tiny. You'll be there forever again. We already have tiny with the pointillism. So for bubbles, one, two, three. Okay, I'm going to stick to that size. So three in box two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Maybe seven for box three. Okay. Maybe I'll put like 20 in box four. ended up with 27 okay so the idea is though we want them to look like they're significantly getting more as they go along so now for this final one it's a whole bunch it might be 50 let's see so I'm starting I'm spreading them out and then just trying to fill in the little areas As you do this, you start to notice how much empty space there really is here. And just when you think you're done, you're going to notice some more. So just do your best to fill in those little empty spots. So this actually is really good if you were creating pebbles, bubbles, even like leaves on a tree. This might be used. So there's just various techniques that you can use and adapt to what you need. All right, so now we have bubbles. So next is scales. Now scales is the trickiest one of them all. So I'm gonna show you how to do them and how not to do them. So for scales, let's put our no and our yes side. All right, so for yes, so you wanna start out with a series of U's that connect and you want them to be the same size. We don't want them to be like that, but then there's like a big one, and then there's like two little, three little ones, and then two bigger ones, and then a little one, and then a big one. Okay, so this is no. We want it to be the same, consistent. Okay, so now when we do the second row, we start from the bump to the bump. So you're actually starting in the middle between the first two, not directly under. From the bump to the bump, from the bump to the bump, and the bump and the bump, and, and so on and so forth, okay? So let me show you how not to do that. So let's say, okay, yay, I started here. I have my beautiful shape of even use. All right, so let's see what not to do. So what I would not do is come under here and start doing this right directly underneath. So you can see how now it has a different vibe, right? This is, the second row is in between the scales of the first row. This is directly under. So we don't want this to happen, okay? So this is yes and this is no. All right, so let's start. Now, so for the first one, we're gonna go in here 
box one stays plain. This the second box. We're gonna make two big scales that fill up. So mine two and a little drop. If you have a little left, just do part part of a scale. You don't want to squeeze a tiny scale in there. Just if it gets cut off, it gets cut off. If we imagined it going, it would keep going. You just want to imagine it, but not really draw it. Now for the next, you're going to do a scale there, a scale there, and a scale there. And then for the bottom one, remember from the bump to the bump. All right? And that's how it's going to look. And then you can just do that next one. All right, so now for row three, box three. We did two there, maybe we'll do like one, two, three, four, okay? And then from the bump to the bump, bump to the bump, bump to the bump, and then you can finish those edges. Again, bump to the bump, in between the scales, not on top, not directly under, in between. And then finally, so here, if they if they feel like they want to finish, they don't seem to quite fit again, just crop them off so they just get cut off without squishing them in. All right, so for the fourth one, we're going to go smaller. So that was four. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six. So they're just getting smaller as your boxes change. And then you can do those little edges. Remember, from the bump to the bump. And this is another one you can get in the zone doing. So when you're doing scales, wherever you're doing scales, stick to it. Don't stop until you finish. Okay? And then these might just get cut off here. Because they're not going to fit, and I'm not going to force them. So you can see here... I, there's something, I did something a little off here, so you can see how this, these four scales here, they're not looking as um, good as the pattern here. So that just had to do with me not raising the little edge. So if I was using a pencil, I could fix that easily, but since I'm not, I'm gonna go with it. But you got to see what happens when you don't curve it properly. So now for number five, I'm gonna go small. So these are gonna be little guys, little scales. So let's think about all the animals that use scales, right? If we were drawing, we have reptiles, right? Snakes, lizards, we have dragons, mythical creatures, mermaids. So depending on what you're drawing, there'll be different styles. So if that's something that's interesting to you, you can always look up the specific styles of scales for a species and then you can make a more controlled um, scaling for that. Alright, so I'm halfway done with this last one so you can see it starts to take longer because there's more scales, there's tinier. So this is another one that if you put some music on and just kind of zone out, just figure out a pattern that goes with like the beat of the music, that helps. Okay, one more row. Oh, and this one actually fit pretty good. All right, so there's our scales. Finally, squiggly. This is my favorite one. It's the most fun. It's the loosest one. It's not very structured. It's just about having it get more busy as we get to the final box. So let's see how that goes. So the first one again stays blank because this is the, the highlight the lightest area so on our paper on our drawing the white of the paper is the lightest value so the second one I'm just gonna do a little squiggly there it looks like a string very loose the third one I'm gonna do a few more squiggles overlapping okay there's a, still a lot of white showing number four just squiggling so it starts to remind me of um, this could be like in the cartoons where they the cartoons are like fighting each other and they have like a dust ball around them of like dirt and stuff or like uh, if you were doing wild hair or some kind of like a tree or a bush texture that might be appropriate 
And then for the last one, you're just gonna do like a whole bunch. You're gonna really make sure you're getting all of the white covered to the best of your ability. You're just squiggling, squiggle. All right, and just really try to fill in as much of those empty white areas, the negative space, we really wanna just fill that in. So there we go. Just do a little more. Just make it extra dark because you're still going to see white. We're going to make it as dark as we can. So there we go. So we can see here we have made six value scales. Oh, that's number 11. We've made six value scales here using different techniques. So we have pointillism stippling first. Then we have wavy, zigzag, bubbles, scales, and squiggly. So I hope you enjoyed this demo. The next lesson, we're going to be creating more textures using different line techniques. I um, hope you enjoyed this. Have a great evening. See you next time. Bye.